Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. It's Joe Choppy, and uh, we're just going to look at a couple of, of things that uh, happened on the overnight models. I'm going to look at the ensembles of uh, the European and uh, the uh, GFS. And what the ensembles are is that you have the, G, the models that you see, and then there are other versions of those models. And uh, what the ensembles are uh, basically are uh, an average of all those uh, different variations because each variation has a different parameter to it. So you wind up with perhaps different outcomes as you go further and further out into the future. And they are very useful as a forecasting tool. Uh, but this is the European. And <clears throat> again, let's focus on what's happening in Western Europe and Scandin Scandinavia uh, as a ridge builds in that area. Uh, and as a result, as we go through time, you can see it here. It's very strong, building across uh, the Arctic region, uh, forces the uh, vortex, uh, or at least part of the vortex, to move uh, into uh, northernmost Canada, brings a colder flow. And this is out 10 days on the European, so uh, the overnight models are pretty consistent with the idea that uh, we have... Um, things that are happening in the atmosphere that are going to lead to some longer term changes. Now I'm going to switch to uh, the GF, the, uh, G, the GEFs, okay, um, uh, 500 millibar um, uh, ensemble, and uh, we're going to take a look at this. Um, and here we go. Uh, this goes out to 384 hours, so this goes out to a longer period. So you can see here, uh, there's our ridge and the record highs that we're going to have for Christmas Eve that's been so well advertised. And then get a little bit of cooling. Temperature's still above normal. But it will also watch again here, this Model 2. Strong ridge builds up in Western Europe, forces a vortex, and actually has a fairly chilly look as we head into the new year based on this. And, and the ridge is still in position here. So uh, this is... Uh, for those of you who are looking for wintertime and cold weather, positive sign, the end of the period. Um, and actually, it, it starts out around the 10-day period now. So this is really getting more and more encouraging because we're getting closer and closer to it. Still in the modeling phase of it, but uh, nonetheless, um, it is getting a little bit more encouraging. But you can see here's a, a fairly well-established northwest flow out of Canada that comes into the northeast. Um, you have some troughing here in the southwest, still pretty active jet stream in the Pacific, moving systems in, so that's something we're going to be watching, see how this all plays up to it. Now, I'm going to switch to um, the GEPS, uh, which is another tool, and we'll take a look at what the GEPS does. And we'll go back, I'll go back to the beginning. Again, keep your eyes focused right here. This is Now, notice, by the way, here we are at the very beginning of this run. And we have a ridge up in Western Europe that corresponds with the same trough that we have here in the east right now that's about to pull out. So what happens is you can see how that ridge weakens as the ridge in the southeast pops up, the ridge in Europe flattens because there's a weather system that's approaching. But here it starts to come up again, and the, the uh, ridge in the east begins to weaken some, uh, then strengthens as it goes uh, into... Um, Eastern Canada, this is back again through Christmas Eve. Now we have, um, we got past Christmas, so watch, keep your eyes on Europe and watch what happens. And you can see uh, the ridge starts to pop up there, gets the troughing, starts to form in the east. Um, you get that uh, set up in Canada, and right through the period, you have generally ridging right up in toward the poles, and the vortex begins to at least at this level, begins to shift to the southeast. So everything seems to be still in line for um, a colder weather look as we eventually get into the new year. Now, again, what it's going to mean in specifics, I have no idea. I don't think anyone does. And one of the questions that I've been asking uh, now is, is not so much what's going on up here, but what's going to happen with this part of the jet stream with the subtropical jet? Is it going to remain active in sending weather systems in to the southwest when the colder air starts to come in, because that's going to be key as to whether we wind up with any snow or not, or is it just going to be a colder and drier, um, a, a colder and drier pattern. So that's another, that's an issue we're going to have to address, and I, I don't think we can really address that until we get into the short, very, very short term uh, inside the 
seven-day period. So anyway, have a good Sunday. We'll uh, take a look at what the models have to say later today. I, I think this trend is in the models is pretty well established. I think uh, the other thing I think is the uh, we have to wait till we get into the uh, actual uh, where it's actually happening so we can watch it happen and see what the consequences of all this change are going to be.